Hello, Cherie Hansen here. What I'm doing in this video is I am reading out the poems that I have uh, had published in various anthologies uh, I have been selected for, um, just so that I can put them once again in, in front of the public and create a little bit of energy about it. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to start with um, Love Poems for the Media Age. This was a uh, publishing house in Vancouver uh, that selected my quirky poems. So I'll start with this one. Pastiche Dialogue. Are you tied to, to the moon? He calmly asked his cow-eyed friend. The teenager told me, I can't go to the movies alone. I, I feel funny, like I don't have anyone. Betty, a 60-year-old, lay face down, careless among the steel pins, exhausted from stitching costumes all by herself in order to forget the 80s, which took her husband, father, and son, and a nephew. More dear to me than my own children, Every three years, as regular as clockwork, I didn't have time to finish mourning. It was an illicit affair, the female lawyer said. So we went to Terrace, the priest and I, to avoid God's wrath. The young blonde widow leaving the dance pulled back her hand, clasped warm beseechingly. You married, he asked. No, she answered. Divorced? No. Single? No. A widow, falling back, dropping her hand, he said. I don't do death. The goldfish swimming in the springtime pond circle the summer round, unaware of winter. And uh, the next one is one I did while I was still teaching and was really interested in absurdities. It's a good place to see them. It's called Construct. Traveling to school, I riff with my mind, self-talk of zebra rides, diamond dog leashes on Rottweilers, seasick goldfish, canary psychiatrists. Sounds of me trail out my car window, all to illustrate to myself a point about brain sex. The grade 10 who cannot read above grade 2 girl with a tattoo across her back, stretching from shoulder to shoulder, settles her necessary but now discarded sweater across her hips with chipped blue fingertips. The cast off arms hanging loincloth fashion. The neck hole round and empty circles and shifts on her, creating a visual target tight, inviting to the male eye, working her inborn urge to dominate. All over her body, the sign of power unavailable from text. A wheelbarrow full of cement chips, Hansels and Gretels spilling the way down the hall of the reforming school, pits yawn out of three doors, computer files are lost, a stuffed toy gorilla goes missing, water is turned off, pee times are announced to the thousand teens. All I feel around me, the boundaries making my voice into a lesson. Life is a noun verb adjective. Registering in some eyes, flat light in others. As I meander, chalk blurring my hands. Homeward, driving myself in the known ways, I see mindlessly a girl no longer young besides the surging traffic, reach behind her without a break in stride, retrieving the twall print pants 
a tree and two shepherds, perhaps, from their wedged place. She is dazed, meandering in a bucolic world. The next one is from uh, the Naropa Experience uh, poem that is called Erasure. Not Otios. We were warrior women in my day. The corsets could sprain our thumbs, pull tourniquet over stomach and thighs. The acid bath of at-home perms would scar the cilia out of ears and nose. My mother wound the skin in the first round of curls to help it tightly take. We could sit straight, upright, on backless chairs or brace ourselves in cars, indomitable at the slam of brakes. All day we smiled a flinch as pinching earrings clipped our heads, the indentation at the end of day a brilliant red. But we were not pointless. Oh no, our shoes shoved tight into sword-like shoes. Sorry, our toes shoved tight into sword-like shoes and bras. We had a name and we were well sheathed. We knew that beauty had its painful price. And the next one is from uh, my anthology called Laying It on the Line. This one was selected by the Toronto uh, Women's Studies to go into their yearly magazine. It's called Totem Child. Father flat beneath a slab in California, I am told. Only rumors. It is never spoken. I wear him in my body. Never say it, nameless shaman. Bruised decoratively, hidden in my crib, my bed, from eyes, from school, waiting for the fading. The bone deep, his jewelry. A neck ring restricts my turning vision. The vertebrae tattooed with cracks. The fury of his hands pulled my sections one from another, separating self from self. I left myself for him. The strength of his hands strangled me from form, jerking my body backwards, incapable of doing any more than going limp, watching my own trailing, helpless legs and arms along the childhood hallways. As if an afterthought thought, a collarbone out of line, unattended, under four-year clothing, a sheathed shard sticks up defiantly. My reconstructed nose, asymmetric, sculpted to his fist, remade me in the image of his own abuse, his father's touch along his young boy's body. I was totem molded to his vehemence, rigid in an unsafe crib, a baby listening for my creator's steps, coming to convert me to his uses, his passing presence marked in x-ray as puzzled doctors hold me up to light. The next one is about speaking out about what has happened to us, holding witness for the reality of our past our history by writing, holding in my throat the words, <clears throat> holding in my throat the words I wished to speak, but feared the sound that cannot be gathered back, grabbed, fisted, and jammed into the crevice, pocket hidden in lint darkness among the dried up mints. I could not taste for swallowing my words, all down the throat the singing ache, a strip sore, notes of pain, a path, the words scraping, clawing at the neck inside. I hold them back, all that blast of truth to feed the parasite of fear. It catches my throat. The heart thumps, speeds, unbearable moments open 
between the lies. Silence opens between the voices at once, the fragile, at once, the perfection of light and shape and life shatters me with simple beauty. When I hear words, the shiver silvers my body. Bright luminescent visions flow from my pen. The voice excites me from the gray-throated life unpacked with all my edges seen. There is no hold, open-handed child step, trusting the treacherous ground, unlit spaces. There is no hold, open throat before the truth. Come, welcome in discoveries, dancing melodies, blinding spin, confusion, map, let go. Uh, this is a little playful one. It is called Spirit Entity. The shaman said, find your animal. The one who dances beneath the full moon, under smudge clouds, or darts across the weeping wands of wet grass. Stark naked, still, frozen in unwanted laser tag stares. It tries to disappear, landscape, sculpture, stone. Find your spirit, friend, your familiar form, your furred or feathered or carapist, dragon, turtle, mythological, beating heart, mentor snake. I know my neighbor who moves like a hummingbird sniper from fence to fence, or the loping deer back sister-in-law, the hamster butt-eared filled canals of the dude across the street. Last week, the phone, the voice next door, she said, what the hell is going on over there? Your house, she said, up on the roof. What, what, what? I heard the thumping, woke me up. There are eight squirrels mating overhead, just your place, really full on at it, only there, eight squirrels. Outrageous things I will not do today. And I was sitting and thinking about uh, how Victorian, prudish, and controlled I am, but inside there's another world. <laughs> I will not lay nude on the elevated deck, scars, cellulite, skin loose and tight, exposed to the neighbor's eyes. I will not hook up pulsing beats to out of doors auxiliary speakers, its tearing sounds, stripping the leaves of trees and dance a heavy metal hip-hop trance convergence, an Isadora wearing only curtains, which are clearly curtains, clasped around me with clothespins. I will not paint just one half of my face a Brazilian butterfly and go to Costco, drifting my way through the giant shelves, lyrical between the upright stems of metal. I will not carve a monolith of two people copulating and spray paint it red. To sit as a temple to the vigor of summer lust looming above my white picket fence. I will not weave colored ribbons through my gate and hang goat cheese, small white and yellow balls of goat cheese on the end of each ribbon with a beautifully calligraphy sign saying, take one, be happy. Thank you. If you are interested in any more of my poetry, I have quite a few on this YouTube channel from past years. And um, hopefully I will have much more to bring you in the near future. You can find me 
and like this YouTube channel. And you can also go to shurihansen.com to follow my blog. Thank you.